Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to review the Huion Canvas 12 pen display. This video is going to be a bit long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review I have already written. The link is in the video description below, or you can use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. Now, in case you don't know, a pen display is essentially a monitor that you can draw on with the pen provided. It's not a tablet, even though it's quite thin. So you do have to connect this to a computer in order to use this. At the time of this video, Huion has two series of pen displays, the Canvas and the Canvas Pro. The differences between the Canvas and the Canvas Pro are the drawing surface. On the Canvas, it's a matte screen protector. On the Canvas Pro, it's matte glass, so it's going to be more durable. On the Canvas, there are express keys, which are just simple press keys. Whereas on the Canvas Pro, they have the additional slider control. Canvas is more affordable, Canvas Pro more expensive. Uh, in terms of value for money, since the drawing experience and the performance is pretty similar, um, the cheaper Canvas series pen displays are more worth the money, in my opinion. Anyway, um, since the drawing performance and experience is pretty similar to the Canvas 13 and 15, which I have both reviewed a few months ago, this video is actually not very different from those two reviews. The only extra content you get in this video is me comparing the active size, the active drawing area here, which is 11.6 inches versus the Canvas 15 which has a 15.6 inch uh, diagonal active area. These are the items included in the box. We have a microfiber cleaning cloth, a card that tells you where you can download the driver, quick start guide and manual, one artist glove. This is a three to one cable. On this end of the cable, we have three connectors that go to the computer. This is a full size HDMI. These two are USB type A. This is for data and power. And this red one is for power. If your computer's USB port can provide enough power to power the pen display, you don't need to use the red cable. And on the other end, we have this USB-C light cable that goes to the pen display. Extension cable for the USB power. Do note that there is no USB wall charger included. A thank you card with contact information to Huion customer service. The pen display comes with one year of warranty. If you buy the pen display from Huion's website, you do have the option to purchase additional warranty. So for extra six months, that's 50 US dollars more. And for extra year, that's 100 US dollars more. The pen and the stand. This is the Huion PW517 pen that uses their so-called Pentec 3. It supports slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity and there is also support for tilt sensitivity. The pen tip doesn't move that much. Even if the pen tip moves, it's the lateral type of movement. It's not the in-out movement. So this is a very firm pen tip. This pen is not powered by battery, so no charging required. The two side buttons here can be customized to mouse clicks and keyboard shortcuts. There's this big piece of rubber grip here, which is very comfortable to hold. And the overall build quality for this pen is very solid and it has a very nice weight to it. The pen can be placed horizontally or vertically on the pen stand. And when you twist the top, you can find 10 replacement nibs included. That's the nib remover. This is the Canvas 12 20 21 pen display. There are some stickers on the display. This sticker tells you what these two ports are. This sticker at the top left tells you there's this anti-glare film that has already been applied. The anti-glare film is actually the matte screen protector. Right now, the surface is actually glossy. That's because this is the screen protector for the matte screen protector. You are supposed to peel this off, but not the matte screen protector. All right, let's try and peel off the glossy screen protector. Oops, that tape is not easy to peel off, so let me use my own tape. Okay, it's off. That took me a few tries. When you peel this, peel slowly and check whether or not this is matte. If this is glossy, it means you have peeled off the glossy screen protector as well as the matte screen protector. So paste the matte screen protector back. 
Here's the size comparison between the Canvas 16 and the Canvas 12. Obviously, this is larger. The other visible difference is there are 10 physical shortcut buttons here on the side. There are 8 here. Both pen displays are quite thin. They have the same thickness. As for the drawing area, let me put an A5 size sketchbook on the Canvas 12 on the display here. So you can see the drawing area is wider compared to an A5 size sketchbook. And for the Canvas 16, let me put an A4 size drawing pad on top. You can see it's wider compared to A4, but it's shorter. The drawing area of the Canvas 16 pen display is actually 80% larger than the Canvas 12. The larger pen display will allow you to draw more freely, whereas on the smaller display, it's going to feel a bit constrained. Both pen displays have 1080p resolution. Pixelation is still noticeable on both pen displays, just that on the smaller display, everything is going to look a bit sharper because it's the same resolution squeezed into a smaller area. Having a larger display definitely is going to be easier on your eyes because you can see all the UI elements, the icons, the text, they are going to be larger. If you have the budget and the table space, I do recommend getting the larger one. But this is, at the time of this review, US $399, whereas this is US $212. So this is significantly more expensive compared to the Canvas 12. Actually, this is almost two times more expensive compared to this. Let's take a closer look at the design. The design looks good. I like the rounded corners. The edges are beveled. Bezels a bit thick, but they look all right. There are eight customizable shortcut buttons here. Power button is there. This pen display is available in two colors. This particular model is the starfish orange color, which is this pastel-like color with a black front. The other model is Cosmo black, which is just black throughout. Four rubber feet to prevent the pen display from moving on the table. This is some plastic material with a very nice textured matte surface. And all of this is matte surface, including the screen protector, of course. That's the anti-glare screen protector. The viewing angles on this IPS LCD, um, it's actually quite good. The colors, they don't shift much when you view it from different angles it's just that the brightness will drop if you view from the sides the matte screen protector provides a nice texture to draw on with the pen but it does introduce some visual noise so it's going to affect image quality slightly by the way this is not a touch screen so it doesn't support finger gestures but even with the matte screen protector the image quality still looks pretty good here are the ports for the cable so this is for the three in one cable and this is for the USB-C cable there is no USB-C cable included with this pen display but the cable is available as a separate purchase for 20 US dollars now this cable is designed specifically to fit the port here so if you have some other USB-C cable at home they may not fit so this particular one that I have this is actually too big for the port and this cable is actually small enough to fit but for some reason it's not able to output video to the pen display so if you want to make sure your USB-C cable can work, you may have to buy the cable from Huion. If your computer has USB-C, you can actually just connect your computer directly to the pen display using the USB-C cable. You don't have to use the 3 to 1 cable from Huion. In this case, this is an old laptop, so I have to use the USB Type-A for data and power and full-size HDMI. But thankfully, the USB port here does provide enough power to power this pen display, so I don't have to connect this. 
to another power source. By the way, there is no stand included with the pen display. The stand is available as an optional purchase on Huion's website for 20 US dollars. This stand here is actually my own stand. This is the Pablo PR100 stand and this is how it looks. This is an excellent stand that allows you to deploy the stand at different angles very easily just by using this latch here and the rubber grip at the bottom extremely stable so stable that I actually have to lift the stand up to turn it around and the build quality for this stand excellent I highly recommend you get a stand because using the pen display flat on a table is not good for your posture this pen display is US $38, which is significantly more expensive compared to the Huion stand. But if you have the budget, I do recommend this one. It's really worth the money. I've just color calibrated the pen display using the Spider 5 Pro color calibrator. We have color support for 97% sRGB, 75% NTSC, 80% Adobe RGB, and 83% P3. Colors on this pen display actually look quite good out of the box but I do need to color calibrate this because for my graphic design work I need the colors here to match the colors I have on my laptop as well as on my computer monitor. Huion mentioned 120% sRGB color support on their website. I was only able to measure 97% that's because my color calibrator cannot measure beyond 100%. 97% is actually quite good. Maximum brightness was measured at 185 nits. Currently, I have the pen display at 80% brightness. So the brightness for this pen display is definitely sufficient for use in a bright room, such as the room I'm in right now. You can probably get the sRGB all the way up to 100% by adjusting some color attributes using the OSD menu. You just have to press and hold these two buttons here. So here you can adjust the backlight, brightness, contrast, sharpness, panel uniformity, gamma, temperature, color effect, and all these miscellaneous adjustments. When you assess the OSD menu, the light will start blinking, but for some reason, even after the menu is gone, the light will still continue to blink. So you have to press and hold these two buttons to stop the light from blinking. And now let's see what you can do with the driver. The functionality for the Mac and Windows driver is almost similar, except with the Windows driver, there are some additional features such as Windows Ink, which you may have to toggle on or off if pressure sensitivity is not working as expected. And with the Windows driver, you can actually adjust the brightness, the contrast, color temperature, and RGB within the driver itself. This driver that I'm using, this is the Mac OS driver. So here you can customize the eight physical shortcut buttons on the side. You can enter your own keyboard shortcut. You can choose mouse shortcuts. This switch display is important if you are using dual monitors because this will allow you to move the cursor from one display to the other and back if you want to. Switch brush will allow you to switch from brush to eraser. And this is where you can customize the pressure curve of the pen by moving this dot. And you can customize the two side buttons on the pen here. Work area I will leave as default. Now if you are left-handed, you can actually turn the orientation 180 degrees so that the shortcut buttons on the left will now be on the right side. If you see any misalignment with the cursor, as in the cursor is not directly beneath the pen tip, you may have to calibrate your monitor. You can do so with this button here. And that's about it with this driver. And now for some line quality tests, I've tested this pen display with Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Clip Studio Paint, Medibank Paint Pro, and Krita, both on Mac OS and Windows, and they all have the same performance. So I'm just going to show you the performance on Photoshop, which is the app I'm using right now. Pressure sensitivity works great. The lines can taper really nicely, really smoothly. Pressure transition from thin to thick is very smooth. And when I zoom in, 
I can see the curves, they turn very smoothly and I can maintain consistent pressure very easily. This display is laminated. The gap between the pen tip and the LCD beneath is very small. You have to look up close in order to see the gap from the side. And this pen is very accurate, so the cursor is always directly beneath the pen tip. Together with the laminated display, there is no noticeable parallax when drawing. Cursor tracking at the extreme edges is quite accurate. It's very difficult for me to click on the wrong things by accident. That's great. And this is the extreme right edge. Support for tilt sensitivity is good. The cursor is able to follow the direction of the pen. This is Krita, by the way. Tilt and pressure can work together. And now let's talk about the drawing experience. Drawing performance is fantastic. As for drawing experience, well, I wish this active area is larger, but of course with a larger pen display, it's going to be more expensive. So that's just how it is. The bigger the pen display, the more expensive it is. Now this smaller pen display will take some time to get used to, but I would say the overall drawing experience, it's pretty good. The app that I'm using is Clip Studio Paint and this app performs really well. Actually all the drawing apps I've tested on this pen display, they all perform really well. This textured surface is really nice to draw on. This matte screen protector has just the right amount of texture so it's really enjoyable to draw on this. By the way, I'm actually using my own keyboard for the shortcuts. The eight physical shortcut buttons on this pen display, that's too few for me. I actually need to use a lot more shortcuts. The lines, they always come out exactly the way I expect them to. Very nice. This is very predictable and very consistent performance. Since this is a matte screen protector, it's not matte glass, it's going to wear out eventually. I'm not sure how durable this is going to be, um, but if I remember correctly, Huion, they do sell replacement screen protectors on their website. So if yours gets worn out or if there are just too many scratches you can actually replace the matte screen protector in the future user interface elements on this pen display like the menus the icons the palettes they are small so they may not be easy to read sometimes i actually have to go closer to see which icon I'm clicking on, especially if I don't use that particular tool that often. For $219, that's actually a pretty good price. It's a very competitive price compared to pen displays of similar sizes from other brands. This is how the pen sounds on the matte screen protector. To maximize the working area, you can press tab. So this will give you more space to draw. So as mentioned earlier, this area is kind of like an A5 size paper. You definitely need to have a stand, otherwise 
I mean, if you draw for long periods of time without a stand, it's going to be very uncomfortable. This pen display has been on for several hours, and the only area that is warm is this bottom part here. This part here is still cool, it's just that this part here, yep, this part here, the bottom and towards the right side, warm, but it's not like hot. You can still place your palm on this and work on the pen display for hours without discomfort. So overall, the drawing experience is fantastic. The pen is accurate, the lines, they come out just the way I expect them to. And you can do like quick hatching lines very easily as well. And you can place dots easily as well. This pen display can be used with Android devices. Now in my review for the Canvas 16, um, when I connected that pen display to my Samsung tablet, this is the Tab S7 Plus, the tablet blacked out and there was some sizzling sound at the port so I did not really test for Android support there but now with the Canvas 12 it seems like it's working fine. So a few things to note. You must use a compatible Android device. The list of Android devices which are supported by this pen display can be found on Huion's website and you need a proper cable. This is actually the Huion USB-C cable. You have to use a cable that can output video signal otherwise you won't be able to get video and you have to use an Android device that can output video signal otherwise you won't be able to get video. The USB-C port on my tablet does not provide enough power to power the pen display so I have to use Huion's 3 to 1 cable as well. This is connected to external power. There is no Android driver, it's just plug and play so the pen works but because there is no driver you cannot customize the shortcut buttons here. I mean they work but you can't actually customize them and this is not a touch screen so to go back to the home page you actually have to use your tablet or your phone. The pen does work. So let's uh, open up a drawing app. So because there is no touch uh, feature here you have to use this. Okay so let's go into this app. This app is called Concepts. Pressure sensitivity doesn't work with this particular app for some reason and without finger gestures I want to undo. It's, it's just not as convenient. This is Clip Studio Paint. Here there is noticeable input lag and again there is no touch there is also no pressure sensitivity for some reason and I wasn't able to get pressure sensitivity to work even though I have gone into the preferences to look around. Um, it just doesn't work for some reason. So Clip Studio Paint is out. I mean you can draw and if you have a Bluetooth keyboard you can actually use all the keyboard shortcuts. It's just that it does not have pressure sensitivity. This is Medibank Paint Pro and pressure works here. Now the input lag will depend on the app you use. Pressure sensitivity whether it works or not will also depend on the apps you use. Currently the horizontal orientation of this pen display is mapped to the horizontal orientation of the tablet. If I make this portrait orientation you can see it's portrait on a landscape orientation. I do not have an Android phone so I can't tell you whether or not this orientation will be able to match Android phones. Without support for finger gestures, it's going to be a bit inconvenient to use this for drawing. You have to use your finger gestures on your Android device so it's going to take some time for you to get used to this new uh, workflow. 
Generally speaking, I don't recommend buying pen tablets or pen displays to use with Android because Android support is not there yet. And in this case, it certainly doesn't make sense because this Samsung tablet actually supports a pressure sensitive stylus already. All right, to conclude, let me just run through the pros and cons very quickly. I like the design, I like the solid build quality. The matte surface, it's really satisfying to draw on and the colors, they look great. The buttons, they work well. Drawing performance and drawing experience, excellent. The only thing I did not quite like is actually the size of the pen display, which I find to be a bit small for me. So you do get what you pay for. If you want larger pen displays, you have to pay a bit more. Having said that, I do recommend spending the extra $20 to upgrade to the Canvas 13, which is $239. The extra inches will help a lot with the drawing experience. And overall, this is definitely a product I can recommend very easily. All right, I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.